Hello everyone. Hello, hello. Thanks for joining us. Hopefully, if you tried to watch um, me last week with Ashley Walters, I couldn't quite get it, but uh, we've got Maisie with us today, so hopefully this is gonna work. <laughs> Just waiting for Maisie to join. Hope you're all okay. Hello, hello. UK gang, yes. Here she is. Okay, I think I've done it. Yay! Hi! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it works! I'm so glad! I was panicking. I thought I sent a request. I could see you chatting. I wasn't on. <laughs> it's scary, um, but... I, did, I did this last week and... Um, I was chatting away to, it was Ashley Walters, I was chatting away to him, having the best convo ever, and nobody could see us or hear us. So can everyone see us? Yeah, and give us a... Give us a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs up in the comments below if you can see us and hear us. <laughs> okay, we're on, we're fine. Okay. There we go. Thanks so much for doing this. Thank you for having me. It's, it's been, um, well, we've, we've sort of been, oh. You're all good. Okay, that's fine. Um, yeah, so how has lockdown yeah. been treating you, Maisie Williams? Getting a phone call. Ah. Sorry, I'm, I'm here. I don't know, it's an unknown number. It's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> don't answer that, please, for God's sake. No, I did, I hung up. <laughs> um, someone's just said happy birthday. That was ages ago, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a little while ago, but thank you. That was right at the beginning of lockdown, I think. I think you're... Is your phone going off again? Yeah, literally. And I don't even know who it is. It's, such an, it's like an unknown number. It's fine. Um, so <laughs> how is lockdown, Maisie? How are you doing? It's good. It's fine. I'm actually doing okay. Um, I don't really leave the house much anyway. And so I haven't really missed that too much. Because when I'm home, I like to just be in my home. I guess like it's really affecting the industry a lot. And like the thought of not working properly for like a couple, like a year, maybe more. I don't even know. That's like a little bit worrying because like when you don't work for a long time as an actor, like you just don't really know what your purpose is in the world because yeah. you're an unemployed actor, like so many people. So. Yeah, I think that, like, I'm trying to, like, be busy doing other things, which has been really nice. But, um, yeah, I'm not finding it too bad at all. Yeah, it's been funny because, like, well, I, I've definitely started to learn more about what I actually enjoy doing outside of work, which yeah. I don't think I've ever really known before, so. Oh, yeah. I'm amazed at how many video games I'm playing because I never really thought that I was, like, into that. But that's how I like really am. So. <laughs> yeah, same here. Actually, I the only game that I can play is called Zuma. Have you ever played Zuma? No. It's absolute crap. But it's just basically the colours. You have to match up the colours. Oh, nice. Right. It's really, yeah, really like basic. Like Candy Crush vibe. Like. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. No. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we're keeping busy anyway and being really productive. Well, yeah. <laughs> So yeah. when you when you first went into lock when we all first went into lockdown, you were doing press for New Mutants, weren't you? Were you in New York? Yeah, no, yeah. So I just I got to New York, um, and we were supposed to just do like a big um, press day, press junket with like press from all around the world, and it was all just starting to like ramp up, you know. Um, and yeah, and then. Um, yeah, I was just worried that I wasn't going to be able to get back because, like, the borders were starting to close and things like that. And then we were sort of questioning, like, is this even a good idea anyway to be with, like, all of these press from around the world and everyone's going to come to this one room and do this thing and then leave again? And we were, like... Because now I feel like we've all adjusted quite a lot. But then, like, I was still like shaking people's hands and like all of this stuff because uh, I just like didn't really know um what I should be doing and so yeah I'm like glad that we all went home and like we didn't end up doing it but um yeah it was like just starting to ramp up which is really exciting because I was really looking forward to yeah just to like all of the fun stuff with promoting it so when was it meant to come out then was it meant to come out in April 
Yeah, so it was supposed to come out April, uh, like April 6th or something like that. Um, yeah. But it's been like delayed a couple of times and it's like a bit of a joke now because like it was supposed to come out in like, I don't even know, like 2017 maybe. And then it got delayed and delayed again. And so it was finally coming out in 2020. And then this like global pandemic broke out. And oh so it did God. come out. But yeah, I think now they have the date for like the 20th. 23rd of August, 26th of August. I don't know why I said. It's but, uh, I think it was 28th, you said. 28th. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Close. I only know that because it's my dad's birthday and um, now we'll go see Mew Mutants. So yeah. is it going to come out in the cinema then? Is that like the plan at the minute? Yeah, it said that it's, it's going to be like in theatres then. Um, so maybe they know something that we don't. Um, yeah. Cool. So, yeah. okay, so if it was meant to come out in 2017, when did you actually shoot it? I think maybe maybe that year, beginning of that year. Oh no, maybe I shot it the year before, 2016. Oh my a, God. A while ago, a little while wow. ago. You do look, you look quite young in it, like compared to how you are now. Well, it's also cause I have the short wig and like yeah, the short yeah. wig definitely makes me have like a little baby face. So, um, but yeah, also it was like a while ago. So <laughs> we all do look a little bit different now. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. So tell tell everyone who hasn't seen the trailer, tell everyone what it's about and what your character is. So it's like based within the X-Men universe. Does that sound really annoying? Can you hear that or not? No. Okay, so like, if there's someone with like a masonry, masonry drill outside, it's like perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. No, yeah. So it's about... Um, it's like set within the X-Men universe, um, but it's about these five uh, like teenage mutants, Ninja Turtles. <laughs> no, they're not Ninja Turtles. <laughs> um, and they are in this like correctional facility uh, to try and basically harness their powers and like understand how to use them and just like protect them from the public and then also from themselves. Um, and uh, I play a character called um, Rain Sinclair and she's also known as Wolf Wolfsbane um and she went through a lot of trauma when she like realized uh, about her power um and she was like raised uh um like as a catholic and like struggles with a lot of guilt and like her pastor thought that she was a witch and like didn't understand her powers and like really punished her for it and so she um just like carries a lot of that with her and has always been um like very shy and like hasn't really got to know anyone in the facility um but when we open this character called Danny Moonstar she is like joining the facility for like the first time um and because like both of them feel like outcasts they get to know each other um very quickly and they like look out for each other and protect one another so it's like this big superhero film about like you know all these six superpowers but it's also just this really beautiful love story between um th these two characters also so it's like got a bit in there for everyone really it looks like loads of fun and like to be honest with you it's like the perfect thing if it is one of the first films that we've got in the cinema when we go back i just don't want to watch anything filmed on zoom that's what i do <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah i think that it's like yeah it's like gonna be like a real escape for everyone yeah um, it's gonna be it's like a real family movie like everyone's gonna really love it it's like appeals to a lot of people and it's like real feel good but you know it's like superhero at the same time so i think i think it's gonna go down a tree okay love it <laughs> so um i as i mentioned to you before so uh, most of our audience are actors and filmmakers um, and loads of Maisie fans, because it, all they say, I love Maisie, I love Maisie, I love Maisie <laughs> at the bottom. I yeah, love it. it's just um, <laughs> <laughs> um, So um, I would really love to go back to the beginning, because as everyone knows, you were so young when you started in the industry. Yeah. Um, so how did it all come about? Because you were with Louise Johnson. Yeah. Where did it start for you? Yeah, so um, I I always wanted to perform when I was a kid and I joined like a local dance school called Susan Hill School of Dancing in Bradstock, if anyone from the Southwest is watching. <laughs> um, and I went there and like I used to just sort of dance with them all the time. And then there was this flyer that was put up on the notice board about this talent show where you could go and basically meet loads of VIPs that were going to change your life. Oh and God. so I was about 10 at the time and I was really excited. So I decided to like 
go and do it. Um, and it took place in Disneyland Paris. And so there was like hundreds and hundreds of kids there. Actually, I think there were some grown ups as well, but it was like really tailored towards like children. Um, and because I didn't really have anything to lose and because, you know, when you're a kid, you're just so fearless. Yeah. Um, instead of just doing dancing, which is like, ultimately what my dream was at the time I think I also did acting and singing and modeling and all of these other things um uh just because I don't know my mom just had a really great attitude like that there was no pressure but it was also just like really fun to do all of those things so she just like pushed me to do yeah the whole shebang really um and I'm glad that she did because while I was doing like the acting part of the talent show, there was this woman called Louise Johnston um, and she had just set up like an agency um, and she asked if I wanted to be part of it and if I, you know, wanted to be like an actor and do auditions with her. And I didn't really understand what it was. Um, also through the talent show, I ended up getting an audition for Nanny McPhee. So I, I knew that I had this audition anyway. Um, but like every kid there like had it and I, I didn't really know what I was doing. Like, I had never done anything like it, but she like practiced all of my lines with me and like taught me so much cause she'd also been a drama lecturer before she started the agency. So she really brought it out of me. Um, and I didn't end up getting the Nanny McPhee audition, but we started working together and then she ended up, the second audition that I got was through her and she ended up getting me on an audition for Game of Thrones and then, oh my gosh. and everything changed really. Whoa. Yeah. Okay, so we, um, for the Game of Thrones audition then, did you feel prepared going in, like, did you feel prepared going into that because of Nanny McPhee or were you still a little bit like, yeah, I knew what to expect now um, because with Nanny McPhee, I actually got to like a screen test. So I did like the proper thing in front of like real camera with like all of these other kid actors. So like I'd really gone quite far in the process. So I kind of knew what to expect. Um, but I guess I don't know really. Like what I had noticed is like a lot of the young kids were just like really well put together. And like, I don't know, as a kid, I never really felt like that. I always <laughs> felt like I was losing something or missing something or forgot my water bottle or my script or something like that. Um, and so that stressed me out a bit. But when, what I realized when I got the part in Game of Thrones was like all of those things about me that were like different was like what made me right for that role. And like, mm -hmm. even I remember on my audition day, I had like a hole in my leggings and I was like trying to cover it with my hand while I was doing my scene. And like Aria is just known for like being scruffy and especially when she was a kid, like it would always like cause her mother shame and like she'd always be so like mad at her if she was late or like playing in the mud or all this stuff. And so I don't know. I guess like I learned very early on that like the, the strange things about you are what make you like unique and what make you like perfect for something. Yeah, for sure. I yeah. guess that the work, not the work, well, the thing that I really like to instill in people when they come into a cast and like you need to be yourself because if you're trying to be something that you think that you should be in an audition setting, you know, even outside of just showing your personality, chances are there's going to be other people who are nervous and they're pretending to be some sort of way they think they should act as well and yeah. if everyone's doing that everyone's the same and then we can't like decipher what is special about you yeah. and you get such a short amount of time with people yeah. that you have to just see that right then because like you can't as a casting director like you can't take that time with every single person that you meet to like make sure that you can like I don't know, just like break down all of those barriers, you know? You yeah. have to be able to see that so quickly. And like, I think that's why it's really interesting with children because like they are just so like honest, you know? Um, but yeah, I guess like when you get older, like, cause even now I'm trying to unlearn so much cause like I was so naive and that was like the best thing that I could have been. And like now I'm trying to second guess myself all the time and like tripping myself up, which is like the worst way to be. So it's like, it is just something that you end up like, learning I think um like as you get older and you like try and play things safer and safer but yeah to just like embrace yourself and take risks is like ultimately gonna like do like better things for you I think yeah yeah for sure mm. do you feel like like starting out so young has helped you now in the way that you see any sort of situations where you do have to sell yourself or 
um, yeah, if you have to read for a role, do, do you feel like that's helped you? Um, I think it's really helped me like on set. Now I know what I'm doing. Yeah. But in terms of auditions and stuff, not really. I still feel like a duck out of water, to be honest with you. Wait, no, duck. Ducks are fine. Fish out of water. <laughs> Ducks will be fine, whatever. Yeah. They do then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, do you know why I've just said that? It's because that's a line in the show and they joke about it because I love just said it. <laughs> anyway. You're selling it, you're selling it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. It's really hard. Do you know what? Self-tapes are something that like dudes just never get any easier, I don't think. And it's just like, you just never know what someone wants. And again, like you've just said, like trying to guess what someone wants and be that person is like the wrong thing to do. But then uh, if you're not doing that, it's like hard to know what you should do. Yes. And so I guess like a piece of advice, well, a lot of my actor friends who I give this piece of advice to don't listen to me. So if you don't want to listen to this, I won't be offended. <laughs> but I always think that you should just take a really strange risk and like use a really stupid prop or like just like do something with a crazy background or like as long as it goes with whatever you're doing. Because I just think that people watch so many tapes that yes. like there needs to be something that like that just stands out about you. I couldn't, I couldn't agree more, like make a strong choice and like commit to it as well, because sometimes you see strong choices, but if there's like a little <laughs> bit less confidence than there should be, then it doesn't play out <laughs> as well. You have to be really confident in, in what you're actually playing. Yeah, honestly, I think that is it. Like having the belief within yourself, like no matter what you want to do, whether you want to do like you want to be in film or like anything in life, like doing something and like being like like with with conviction and like just being sure of yourself is like the key to yeah. to to everything. Yeah. And, and yeah, we'll hard. say this all the time. Mm. And yeah, I'll come off this and be like, Oh, was, was I good enough? Like oh. was I okay? <laughs> Did I say anything weird? So like <laughs> We preach, but like we need to practice what we preach. But it is great, great tips. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like it's the key, but it doesn't mean that I've really found it. Yet. No, it's like, <laughs> I'm not the key, but I don't know how to use it. So. Yeah. yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's talk about um, being on set and how how you work on set. So um, obviously, Game of Thrones, like there is so much going on in some of those scenes. Yeah, you've got pyrotechnics, you've got hundreds of extras, you've got this massive ensemble cast, and yet you've got to stay like grounded and centered in what you're doing. How how do you do that? Like, what is your? Do you have any tips around that? Um, I always I pace all the time when I'm nervous about anything. Like I'll pace. Um, and like quite often when they're setting up, they'll want you to stand like in your spot. Um, but when there's all of that going on, it can just be like really distracting. And so like from a young age, like I've always just like stuck my fingers in my ears and like looked at the floor and like just repeated my stuff to myself, whether it's like my lines or whether it's, I don't know, just like anything about the scene, especially when, when things are really emotional. I think like as a kid, I used to really convince myself that these awful things were happening around me. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I just like, repeat things over and over and over in my head and just be so zoned out from anything that was happening I guess it's like meditation to be honest with you although yeah. I didn't don't, like I wouldn't have used that name for it then but it's just like focusing so intensely on like the character or like a message for the scene or like something that you need to say that you like a, even if it's like a line you keep forgetting or something that like is tripping you from like doing a, a great job um but yeah just like really zoning out I think it's just like yeah you've, you've got to be able to do all of those things that you can do like in in like a drama room or like in like a self-tape but like with all of this stuff going on and I don't know I think I've I've found peace in it almost like what now when there's like a lot going on it's like it adds to the tension of like what we're about to do you know and like you've got a million takes but I love to be able to do something in the first take because then I know that I can do it and I feel confident to do it again yeah. and again and again yeah um so it's like the build and you can feel it and like people are looking at you and they're like, oh, she's about to do that bit or, you know, and I just think that now all of the mayhem really sort of like plays into it and I can use it. Um, 
but yeah at the beginning I'd have to literally just like have my fingers in my ears and like and just like repeat things over and over again and like look at my feet <laughs> yeah you, you're you're um for, for you know you started out so young and you've had this like well Game of Thrones is just obviously the biggest show in the world <laughs> and you are who you are in it it's just insane but the, how have you got any tips for like young people who are entering the industry but also parents like how to keep them like away from it some certain aspects of it like like you were saying about the um you were trying to think of yourself like bad things that actually happened to you and things like that like that's quite traumatic <laughs> yeah <Isn't> it? <laughs> yeah it is and you know when I when I was when I in like season one I couldn't cry unless my mum cried so I would go over to her and be like mum I need to cry in the scene and she'd start talking about all of the awful things that have happened in her life and she'd be like and we just talk about stuff together. Cause like, I mean, every family's been through some stuff. Um, and, and I don't know, me and my mum have always just had a connection over those things. And so we'd literally just sit and talk about awful things and cry. And then I'd go on set and my mum would be off set, like by the monitors still crying. And I'd go on and do the scene. <laughs> go, bye mum, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, bye mum, thank you, you cry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I don't know if that's the answer because I don't know if that was good for either of us. But I think, um, I don't know, like, I think like, I've just, if your kid is gonna be an actor, like they ultimately must be very emotionally mature in order to like want to do something like that and like really be like great at it. They must, I don't know, they just must, and I think, just like understanding that about your child and like engaging with that and like nurturing it and like, you know, allowing them to feel those like really grown up emotions and like feel validated for feeling those things rather than like just being, you know, too authorit authoritative and like, you know, wanting to squash it. Um, because ultimately that's like, that they need to understand those things about themselves in order to like portray anything on, yeah. on screen. And it, I, I don't know, like, I think it's, I always really struggle to talk with children, but I remember when I was a child, I hated when people didn't know how to speak with me because I just wanted them to speak to me like a grown up. And it's so frustrating that I have been like that to other kids instead of just like speaking to them like a, like, like a grown up, like yeah. you know, nurturing because they see everything and like I remember when I was a kid I just felt so grown up like, I felt like I knew everything about the world you know and and I guess because my mom always allowed me to think like that and feel like that I could then be like a really great actor because like I felt like my emotions were real and valid and like okay yeah so, yeah I don't know that's amazing it sounds like your mum was really supportive in the right ways for a young yeah. actor Definitely. Like I have, I've just got, I'm so grateful to have like the upbringing that I did with her um, and to have someone like that who is like really supportive because I know it's not like that for everyone and like it's very, it can be really difficult when it's not. And don't get me wrong, I know incredible actors who started at a very young age who didn't have parents like that who are still doing incredible things now. So my way isn't the only way. Um, but if you are a parent watching this, like that's just like the greatest thing you could be for them, I think. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to mention in that, just popped into my head, what we've both actually watched recently is Honey Boy. For that <laughs> yes. father and son relationship. For, if anyone hasn't seen it, it's so good. That um, film, yeah, it's really, really beautiful. And like, I think that brought up like a lot of memories from like being a child on set. Um, and it wasn't like that for everyone and like, you know, but I think that it's, yeah, it's an incredible film and it's like very, very insightful. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so uh, I wanted to speak a little bit about Fallen because I love the Fallen, Carol Morley film. Yes. Um, so how does something like that, because I know that you worked very differently on the Fallen than you did on Game of Thrones. So yeah. Um, if anyone hasn't seen it, The Fallen is um, a indie feature film. Carol Morley directed it. It's about these school girls who, um, it's very dark. They all start to, um, 
what, how, what's the actual phrase for it? They like I think it's called like mass hysteria, but yeah. at the time they, yeah, they just like have these fainting fits and like they all are, it's like very real to them, um, uh, but it can be perceived as like just many things. It was set in the sixties. And so there's these like promiscuous girls that are getting into trouble and fainting and having these like mass fainting epidemics. And it was, it was an era where that sort of thing wasn't really valid or listened to. And, and so it's, yeah, these, these girls and their connections with each other and, and like the school and yeah, this all girls school. Yeah. yeah, it's such an amazing film. And that, you and Florence, it's Florence Pugh's, do you say it was her first film? It was her first film, yeah. 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 So you two together are so good. But the way that you work with all of the girls, and there's some other names in there as well that have gone on to do amazing things. Mm -hmm. But it's such a great film. So I just wanted to give that a shout out because I think people should see it. Yeah, no, for sure. It's such an incredible film. Um, I, I love being a part of it. And it was just like a completely new way of working. Like it was very method almost. Like we, we all of the girls, the, the, the main friendship group was about seven or eight girls. We all lived together throughout the entirety of the shoot in one house with like an au pair who cooked us dinner. And we um, we just hung out 24 seven. We watched movies together every evening and we like learned our lines together. And then we went to have our dinner and then we went to bed and then we got up and we got in the van together and we went to, so it was like we were at school together, you know? And we just like really bonded over those few weeks. It was like, yeah, it was just a very intense experience. and. Um, Lydia, the character that I played, she was like very segregated from her mother. Um, and, uh, you know, throughout our, our time, like shooting, like the relationship, um, like that we held on set was like very, just like distant, you know? Um, but yeah, it was amazing. It and was, that, it was, was that um, Carol, Carol Morley's, was that, she did that on purpose. She like split you up and she put you all to get all the kids together and made sure that yes. you were in this environment. She wanted, she just wanted it to be as real as possible. Um, and I just, I'd never done anything like that before. And it was like oh. amazing. And the film like turned, I don't know, it wasn't the most pleasant experience. <laughs> <laughs> but b because of that, the film was like the best it could be, you know? And yeah. so I understand like why it had to be that way. And I don't know, I feel like if I were to make a film, like I'd want that atmosphere to be quite similar. It was, yeah. Especially if, if like your lead character is like very segregated or like, you know. So yeah, it, it was it was just like, interesting and like, you know, very, very different to Game of Thrones. And like, I just learned so much. I love that, I love putting the actors in that situation to make anything which makes anything more realistic in my eyes is like the best. So yeah. I really love the film. So I just wanted to shout it out. Um, something else I'm really looking forward to is Two Weeks to Live with Sean Clifford. Yeah. It looks so good, but I've, so I've only seen that one, I think it's like a minute and a half trailer, but it looks so good. So yeah. when's that out? So that will be coming out, um, I think sometime around like October, November, maybe towards the end of the year. I think they're still figuring out all of the scheduling and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I, it was so much fun. We shot that, we shot it in like six weeks, which was um, like insane. I never thought that we were going to get like a whole series done in six weeks, but we did. How um, many episodes is it? six episodes oh, um wow. and they're like half an hour long each uh so they're i don't know i've i've been i've been watching content like that that's like you know like a six to eight episodes 30 minutes each 20 minutes each and like i've just been loving the way that you can like build momentum with something like that so yeah. i'm really excited to be part of a, a show that sort of works in that format yeah. um but yeah it's like a dark comedy um uh i play a character called kim um and sean plays my mom tina uh and we have basically like lived in the middle of nowhere for the majority of kim's life um and the show opens with kim like leaving home and like going off on an adventure into the real world to try and like live a normal life um and tina has like become quite overprotective over the years and decides to like go out after her um and they uh yeah they sort of like live like in a cabin in the woods in the middle of scotland and they're both quite savvy with like hunting and fighting and gathering and things like that and so the two of them like 
you know, chasing after each other in, in the real world is like quite a funny backdrop for the two of them. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, and they meet a bunch of people along the way and get into a bunch of trouble. And yeah, it's, it's just great fun. Really, really great fun. It looks so good. It really does. And I, <laughs> I really love Sean Cleaver. But your character just looks like so much fun in it as well. <laughs> you look very, um, what's the word? I don't know, it's how I imagine, like, how you actually are, like, the closest thing that I've seen to how you actually are. Yeah, no, I guess so. I think I was just really keen after the show to go into something which was, which just was very different. And I think there are a lot of similarities between Kim and Arya. Um, but I think, like, tonally, the show was just, like, a great laugh to be on yeah. set every single day. And... Um, it's like set in present day. So, you know, the clothes and everything like that, it's like all very colorful in comparison to, to Game of Thrones. And so, yeah, I was just, I, I guess for me, I was allowed to be most like myself because I, I don't know. I just think like, you know, on a, on a comedy set like that, it's just like, yeah, you just like want to embrace, embrace every part of like humanity that you know, really. Yeah. 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 I'm excited for that. Um, so I know you've also been doing a bit of producing because that's how I know you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, tell us a bit about that. Are you like, what's your plans with, with all of that malarkey? Are you planning yeah. on doing more? Yeah, so um, I set up a production company called Pint Size Pictures. Um, and my aim was basically just to just tell stories of young women and work with incredible women um and yeah just like have a go at making my own films really like I feel like I've worked on a lot of different sets and like there's so much about like you know filmmaking that fascinates me and I just wanted like a vessel to be able to do that really and so I've been working on this film with Larry Roberts who you know um mm -hmm. uh and we've been doing a short film um which we were supposed to shoot right at the beginning of lockdown um but because we were locked down we couldn't end up doing it so we're going to be pushing that to either the end of the year or like the beginning of next year um but that's like it's been like a really great learning opportunity for me because like I've never although I've worked on a lot of things like I've never actually made anything before and so producing like something short for now has been mega exciting and I've just like learned so much um mm -hmm. and especially because like our leading character is a child and so like there's just so many precautions that you have to take when you're working with children um and I just wanted that to be like a really pleasant experience for them um but even during lockdown like we've been writing so much together um and just like coming up with like new and exciting ideas and honestly we're just never short of ideas and I don't know how anyone ever struggles to come up with ideas but it's just like implementing them <laughs> that we're <laughs> well we're locked down right now so it's hard to do anything but you know when we're gonna bounce back so hard you have oh my god <laughs> so hard it's coming it's coming yeah. it's so good to, but you know your your experience and your taste is amazing so the, the whole process because it, it is kids yeah. to have that perspective from an actor who's really like really been there in the biggest way you can possibly imagine yeah. is um yeah. literally priceless so is that the yeah, first absolutely. Like, yeah i don't know we'll call it that it, it's been amazing <laughs> so it's been great right we've got to wrap up i'm really yeah. sorry but no I, it's all good I wanted to ask you if you've got anything you've been listening to, anything you've been reading that you wanted to shout out. Yeah, so with everything that's going on in the world right now, um, particularly with like Black Lives Matter and like the whole criminal justice system in America, I've just been like trying to learn as much as I can and and basically stop trying to like pass it off as someone else's problem because I've always like felt like, you know, I'm a perfect citizen and I'm fine. Um, and I just wanted to dig into that a little more. And so I've been listening to this really great podcast, which I actually saw on Florence Pugh's Instagram first. I just got the recommendation from her. Um, it's called uh, Seeing White and it's by Seen on Radio. Um, and it's just like a really in-depth look at how we got to this situation and why white people th have thought and think that it's okay to like be the dominant race among like uh, uh, over like every other race. And like, I guess it's like something that you've never, you don't really talk about white people as like 
white white people are always seen as like the top and then there's like all these other races and like yeah. it basically puts white people in that box of like being a race and being like this is what you are known for and this is your stereotype and this is like how you have acted over like millions of years um so that's been uh like really really interesting and it's just um yeah i mean it's just like taught me so much um and then amongst that there's this book that i've been reading called white fragility and um yeah that is basically it is called white fragility why white people find it so hard to talk about race or something like that and it's basically about all of those times when you feel attacked and you feel like being like oh it's not me i'm not like that not all white people like and it's just basically like debunking the whole thing and being yeah just like you have to take responsibility for the way that your people have acted um and yeah. so yeah that's been like very and, great. Al and oh. also know about it like there's yeah. no education so you know you really do have to seek out this information so yeah. i i asked you that question because i know you've been sharing some really amazing um resources and i think that we've got a platform here and this is really important to backstage as well okay. you know? yeah so we need to be mentioning it for sure yeah oh, absolutely um i post a lot on my instagram i mean i'm no uh, by no means and, and I, I don't think anyone with a platform is trying to say that they are like they know better than everyone else um but i think that you know when you have a platform it's important to like try and give people the resources so as they can teach themselves as well as teaching yourself too yeah for sure I totally agree. And I just want to end it because I think you've got amazing taste, but only because you like all the same films as me. So I must say <laughs> I've got amazing taste. So um, um, what films have we been watching lately? Um, you know, I actually watched uh, Dog Tooth recently, which is Yorgos Lathimos. Oh, yeah. Lathimos is yeah. like first film um because i've like i'd watched every other one and i hadn't watched like the first one and yes. blue hunt who plays danny moonstar in um in new mutants yeah. she actually recommended it to me and it was incredible so i don't know if anyone yeah if if you haven't seen that it's like incredible and it's i haven't seen it yet. So. yeah it's really really great um I also watched a couple of years ago, I actually recommended this to you the other day, it's called Raw. Um, uh, yeah, I still need to see like, it. Yeah, it's like a French, like, uh, like zombie, no wait, it's French cannibal, like, movie. <laughs> I, that's, I mean, that's niche, but that's my perfect genre, you've just... Yeah. <laughs> and it's really really incredible um i love it so much i watched it a couple of years ago but i definitely like watch it again i like films that i could watch a second time um yes for sure um and then uh alex ross perry he did this amazing film called her smell in 2018 which is um yeah which is like incredible i think a lot of films that i like are like quite dark and like very i mean kind of like the falling it's like yeah, it's just like a lot, it's just like very highly strung, incredible women who are feeling a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> that's what we are. So. Yeah. <laughs> Literally that just like really films nice. about girls like me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, amazing. So that was Dog Tooth, Raw, Her Smell. Um, and the podcast you recommended was C and White. B and Y um, by Seen on Radio. And then the book is White Fragility, Why White People Find It So Hard to Talk About Race. Love it. Thank you so much for doing this. I really- I love it. I really like seeing you anyway, but you know, there's people <laughs> watching this time, so it's even better. Yeah, <laughs> for everyone else as much as it is for us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, thank you so much, guys, for watching, and um, keep an eye on our, um, well, on the social media that you're on right now, because we've got loads more stuff coming up. Um, and yeah, thanks from me, thanks from Backstage. Thanks from Maisie, I think. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> bye. 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 bye.